Hello, uh, Mambo Vipi. Uh, Karibuni the chance. Mimi ni Tuvalisa Saidi. Na tungependa kuwakaribisha kwenye mahojiano haya maalumu ambayo tunge tunatarajia kuyafanya hapa na wageni wetu waliotembelea ofisi zetu hapa za Masasani jijini Dar es Salaam na hawa si wengine isipokuwa ni bwana uh, Kate uh, Linton Smith akiambatana uh, na uh, binti yake ambaye anajulikana kwa jina la Malaika Bagonzoli Bagonzoli yes uh, nataka nihakikishie kwamba hilo jina nimelipatia vizuri so hawa uh, wamekuja hapa ofisi ni kwetu uh, baada ya kupata uh, tendekezo au kushauriwa uh, kwamba waje hapa uh, kutokana na tatizo walilonalo uh, la siku nyingi uh, wana kesi uh, ya siku nyingi ambayo inahusiana na kudhulumiwa uh, wa ardhi ya wana kesi hapa kate uh, asili yake ni, ni mtu wa raia wa uh, Trinidad Tobago kama ushauri wa ni mmoja kati ya nchi za Caribbean uh, na alikuja hapa uh, zamani kwa Tanzania tangu kipindi cha uh, rais wa kwanza wa hiyo na pia ni moja kati ya watu hao. Uh, alikuja hapa Tanzania uh, katika ndani ya muktadha huo akakaribishwa uh, aliwahi hata kuzungumza na Mwalimu Nyerere kumwambia uh, Mwalimu Nyerere kwamba natafuta nyumbani kwetu na Mwalimu akamkaribisha hapa Tanzania. So akaja hapa akaanza makazi huko uh, uh, Arusha uh, na akawa na shamba lake huko manyara na dhani karatu karatu maeneo hayo huko lakini baadaye yakatokea alipokezea akakamatwa akafungwa kwa kipindi cha miaka saba alafu akarudishwa huko Trinidad and Tobago akiwa hana kitu kabisa lakini kwa bahati nzuri pia na ndugu zake Marekani ndo akamchukua pale akampeleka Marekani uh, akaishi Marekani akafanya uh, biashara mbalimbali lakini uh, tangu mwaka ya 2017 uh, amekuepo hapa nchini Tanzania anakuja na kuondoka lakini yuko hapa na kikubwa ambacho amekuwa akifanya kwa miaka yote hii uh, ni kupigania uh, ili shamba uh, lake au hii mali yake ambayo ana, ana iki na anaamini kwamba amedhulumiwa anaamini kabisa kama ni haki yake na amepambana sana amekwenda kwenye kila sehemu kutafuta haki yake lakini ameshindwa kuipata kwa hiyo baada ya kuendana na watu wawili watatu wakampendekeza haki yake ni chanzo kwa ajili ya kupata kikwa na kuzungumza na mtanza sasa changamoto ni kwamba Kiswahili hapa hakiko vizuri sana kwa hiyo tutazungumza nao na pale itakapobidi inaweza nika nikatafsiri kwa hiyo tukukaribisha tu kwenye mazungumzo haya kufuatilia sasa familia hii na nini mtoto wao kwa mamlaka za nchi yetu Mr Smith if that is okay would you like to be referred to as Mr Mr Smith 
نقول آه. سمي آه آه you're most welcome at the end yeah and it's malaika too uh, you're very welcome thank you maybe uh we can start this conversation uh by telling us uh why are you here i came i came to this uh, uh station because uh, i had so so many places so many offices all of the government offices uh, i you know i've exhausted you know Core and core. I've seen all of them in Arusha. So many years ago, I started from the last one. After him, so many years passed, four years to get another one. And there's another one, not just Mr. Mogella. And uh, everybody knows me, Mr. Mkuchika, um, uh, Luenad Mende, Mr. Kikwete, Mr. Mkapa, uh, Mr. Maniga, who uh, died. Uh, God bless him. He, I knew him. Personal, you know, but my case personal from since he was a, a young man in the offices. I know him as an ambassador in New York City. He was sent to Somalia mainly because of me. And uh, before he died, he's the one who helped me receive my C class permit that I have now. Even though I was given a C class permit by the government so I could uh, operate my restaurant business. Uh, after it was a uh, uh, there's some problem here. I end up having a problem. I always stay to stay in Tanzania. Mm. I, just, you know, I don't know why. Mm. I have children here. I have grandkids here. Mm. Um, but the you know, story goes on. So after it, you get exhausted from going to the proper channels and getting the same answer again and again. Neglect. Uh, who are you? You know, then you look for. So this is my the people who are yeah. yeah. Tell us about uh, the property in question. Like, uh, where is it located? How uh, big is it? Uh, and uh, what is it worth? I mean, uh, well, in the Makai, the coffee estate, it was started by a general uh, in 1940. And uh, this is the most, one of the most beautiful farms we've ever seen. Um, this location is uh, right at the back of the Colombo crater. In front there's a uh, Holy uh, and then Lake Yassi, and to the right, Holy by To the left, there's Arusha. And it's a, it's a very beautiful mm -hmm. place. So, most people said the, the, the eyes on it. As a black man owning such a property, I always have. Is this yours? Could you really own such a thing? Was the father a king? So, uh, as far as the location of the place, there's not many places that. Uh, and how big is it? 1,750 acres. Mm -hmm. 350 acres coffee. Mm -hmm. And in fact, 750 mm -hmm. uh, uh, wheat out of crops. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Tell us, how did you uh, obtain that? Well, I, 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 bought, I bought the place from this uh, Asian in Kiran Pekat Patel after I made an excursion with uh, MZ and the latest son because I wanted him to see in Goro Goro. And then we were starting a company called Nairoa. So we were looking for you know, places and things to do with the company because we were bringing airplanes from abroad to spread these wheat fields. Mm -hmm. So since it was that neighborhood we read about the farm being for sale. Mm -hmm. was more than one. Mm -hmm. So when I saw it in the Makai, I didn't believe I could ever want such a thing. Mm -hmm. But then uh, after I spoke to the, the, the agent who was there, mm -hmm. um, he assured me if I paid so much money inside the country and out of the country, then we could work something out by me coming to live in Tanzania, uh, run the crops and from the proceed of the crops I pay for the property also. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started to do it. When was that? It was in 1980, 81. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's when I, uh, so I run the piece for about seven years, you know, planting mm -hmm. crops and uh, before I had to have these uh, problems with the Germans and the, the Zungu. Mm -hmm. uh, you give me 
many problems. Mm -hmm. uh, how did the problem start? Well, it started taking my, my, my animals. They would steal all the spears from the property, you know, anything that... That was when? That was in like 1983. Mm -hmm. You know, and on what's it? I mean, they would not let me rest. I'm alone, so mm -hmm. I just speak this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had all these big ears, uh, you know, a young man, mm -hmm. not knowing the language, so uh, I was being put mm -hmm. for the task that I was, I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just abused. Mm -hmm. So every time I leave my property, I, I was robbed. Mm -hmm. um, until I decided to go to find him um, after completing to all the government authorities, I reached to Mr. Kolo. Kolo was this, uh, he was a member of parliament, and if you remember Kolo is the one who won some of the Olympic uh, medals for Tanzania. Mm -hmm. One of the only medals I think Tanzania from this Mr. Kolo. Mm -hmm. So when I saw Mr. Kolo, and I told about my situation, he told me this is much, it's, it's more a community, a community problem and I should take on a contractor from who speaks in that dialect, the Mbulu, because the Mbulu, they are different people, they don't they have to mix a whole lot and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, these people I rely on to take my coffee, to do all the jobs, because they surround the that area, Karaku, um, Mbulu. So he's the one um, recommend that I get a, another farmer, Using, um, using his influence on the men, while well, I use my influence on the women and the children to pick the coffee. Mm -hmm. So that is was a deal. So after he broke the deal, and I would run the property with the coffee and stuff, he would, he would deal with the, the men. But then the stealing went on. Every time I leave the property, everything left. Mm -hmm. I stole all my cows, uh, 90 cows, my hundred goats, my donkey, mm -hmm. and uh, reports went on. Mm -hmm. There's people who cry, they send you very make reports all the way to Kuchika, mm -hmm. to the authorities, the police, mm -hmm. and they, they took the arrest. Mm -hmm. But I never follow up on taking people to prison mm -hmm. because I, I've never been to, at that time, to work with. Prisoners like it has me, mm. but it is not a place you want to go mm. in any mm. circumstance. Mm. So uh, I never went to court, and the stealing went on. You get to great land later. You start stealing bigger things, wheat, parts of my tractors, uh, my vehicles, my PGUs. Mm. You know, just they're trying to run me off. Mm. Uh, if I go to America and I come back, so many things is gone. The German have my tractor. The German have my, my, my clothes. I have to go to the Chica and the police to get them back. And then, the, as far as they're concerned, you're foreigners. Mm. They settle down. Mm. So, they're more looking to see me get a problem because, you know, Zumbu is mass as far as Moana. Mm. And this is what I reach, I, I come to. This is what I see in Africa. Mm. So, you know, um, as a black man, young black man, born in a property like that, there was no escape from discrimination, injustice, and stuff like that. So, uh, I knew, I love Tanzania. So, going through hell, you know, they said uh, in English, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Mm. Uh, since my ancestors were, were sold as animals, mm. I'm coming back home. Mm. And Let's get back to. Uh, where, if I use the right words, uh, you know, the persecution and the, you know, yeah, start. Uh, how did you end up in a prison? Well, after so many thefts, uh, we stole everything. Then um, one day I was going to town and I heard that uh, these bandits were coming to my house. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that, I, I, I returned back to the house. I got my woman and she had a gun. I was armed with making an arrest. I arrest some of these guys, and as the arrest went on, I battled with me and one of the guys who had a cutlass. Mm -hmm. And while me and Google tossed him, he got shot. I put him in the car, I took him to the police precinct with other three other bandits. I left them there. 
took him to the hospital. After took him to the hospital, the same contractor who had a contract with for the week and he went and take the man from the hospital with the doctor. I went to his house, that had a lunch, the whole village and looking at the guy in the car, and then they took him to Mufamu. He died on the way from loss of blood. Mm. He brought him back to the hospital. Then the police came and arrested me. Mm. For murder? For murder. Mm. Uh, by the name of, my nickname, Sohova. Mm. The police never investigated the case. Mm. Uh, they have not spoken to me about uh, what transpired. Mm. Uh, they they read up the right their report. And uh, I've been in high school for seven years. They sent me all over. Tanzania. Seven, seven, seven years. Seven years. I, after after uh, I stayed in Mulu for a while, they took me to Arusha and uh, I was protesting mm. in Arusha. They didn't like that because there were so many remand, uh, uh, remand days, thousands mm. of murder charges mm. and never going to court. But at that time, the judges come to court once a year. Mm. So until that was when? That was in nineteen in the eighties. In the eighties. Mm. So then I had uh go back. I stopped eating food. Mm. So that uh, they would take me to court fast. Mm. So after he is one how how long they took me to court. My lawyer, Mr. Ojari, he was driving up and down with my my land over. Mm. The, the, to the key song uh, for the farm from my from my wife who when she was young she uh, never been to the town mm. had no education so he gave her fifty thousand and she gave him the so that was my biggest mistake for me he sold what he had to sell put who he had to put there mm. and then uh, I knew that the farm was a uh, wild green Raymond that my farm was for sale so they were taking me to court and so many other trumped up charges just mm. so that uh, I wouldn't get no chance to, to have bail or any chance to speak to. So I go to, every time I go to court, I tell the magistrate I like to go to my house. Mm. I've never been back to my house. Mm. All my personal uh, things, my passports, my... Uh, they took everything. Mm. And I came from America with everything I owned. Mm. So I lost my piano, my guns, my... My dogs, my, my machine started making peanut butter in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Because the Afro Americans that I knew, the Black Panthers, mm -hmm. everybody came to the house and take yeah. things that. Uh, and, and how did you come out of the prison? It was your, you know, such as. Uh, well, after being uh, sent around for so many years, every time they sent me to a prison, I would just stop eating food. Mm -hmm. And after they find so many. Modes of food not being they sent me to another prison because mm. I, I, I learned from Mr. Katabazi and Mr. Kapada that I'm a, I'm a member of, I mean of the Commonwealth. Mm. So being a member of the Commonwealth, the assisted treatment I must receive. And if I have a problem, the one jailer, he goes in, he gets locked up. Mm. So I use that as a acknowledge to you know, they, they treat me like a king. I eat very well. The food that I, they give me in the prison, in the prison uh, amazing. But amazing. They, I mean, I was a boy to cook wherever, wow. wherever they take me. It's like a restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They took me to this place uh, called Tegula Simba, mm -hmm. uh, where the cows of CCM, the food that they bought for the cows, really 700 head. Mm -hmm. And they tell me, I can, I can see there forever. Mm. That's after that's after I was uh, pardoned. But it brings me back to to, to Konga. Mm. I stayed in Maganga, Maganga, and spoke mm. and uh, Kajaja. Mm. I stayed there. You, know, you stayed there with them? Yeah, managing Simba mm. or Yeah. Because every prison has a soccer field. Every prison. Mm. And it's run by Stimpira. Mm. Every prison. Mm. Yanga Simba. Simba has the, the kitchen, Yanga has the laundry, uh, rail has this, Maji Maji has that. Mm. So the system that we have in, 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 is run by 
in peers. Yeah. So and so you know my my my, my original question: How did you come out of the prison? Like I came out of the prison because uh, I get a chance to a guy called Mwina. I get him to take my letters to a, a lady I knew in a, before I was incarcerated. Her name was Asha, and she was married. Uh, she's a Muslim woman, nice woman, and she had, a, she had a nice husband. And they start communicating with my mother through on the channels. She come see me, and uh, your mother. Yeah, my mother was in America, mm. and this this lady, her husband, my husband, they start communicating with my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother start communicating with the ambassadors and the government. Mm -hmm. So then she took Mr. Frank Seeley. Mm -hmm. One day, uh, while I'm in, in Tanga, I was still on, on death row. Mm -hmm. And then I was convicted. I, uh, I had my appeal. <laughs> but I knew I was sober. Mm -hmm. Not my real name. Mm -hmm. and, they charged you in the. They charged me Asuhuba. Oh, Asuhuba. They sent me to, on, to death row. Asuhuba. Mm -hmm. yeah, no investigation. Mm. They start sending me all over the country. So when, yeah. my, when my mother came with the ambassador, mm. uh, they are... Uh, no, the ambassador to the state. No, the, mm. my ambassador from, um, from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. They flew all the way. Mm. Because my mother, she paid mm. most of the bill. The government didn't pay. My mother put in the bill. And she came, saw my lawyers. They're crooks. Mm. Mr. Kinn, they were there. Mr. Kinnabo, Mr. Ojari. God is great. Mm -hmm. You can rob an honest man and expect to live long. Mm -hmm. And uh, since it's written in scripture, I should see my enemies defeated. Mm -hmm. So um, my mother came and uh, eventually, I don't know, the, uh, the president went to get my papers and he had a hajj. Mm -hmm. So when he went to a hajj, that's when uh, they started to harm people in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Because they hadn't harmed people doing Mr. Mary this film. Mm -hmm. And they hung you know, four people, one woman and three men. Mm -hmm. um, and they were caught in the act. Mm -hmm. So um, the prisons were filled with uh, people convicted to die. Mm -hmm. So when uh, MZ and you know, Winnie was going to a Hajj, mm -hmm. they started fixing the machines. Mm -hmm. To hunt people. Mm -hmm. So that's when the brain when it started. But people really were being afraid to be harmed. Mm -hmm. And then the keys came. When the keys came, that's when people started being harmed. They came to took ten people and uh, the miracle happened. Mm -hmm. I was there. And the preacher said, In a way, never came in this door, ever left. Mm -hmm. But if you believe, we can go back out this door. I was there. The guys who leave, show their hand. But you're Muslim, Christian, I was there. These guys walked. Because after they took 10 people that uh, night and hung them, the next morning, they gave people 60 years, 100 years, life imprisonment. Uh, that's why I met some of those guys. After I was pardoned, I had no number. So I was in Tanga with no number. And they asked me, what are you going to do? You have no number, you're never going to get out of prison. What do you want to do so far? The boss asked me. I said, I want to start a soccer team. I started Cosmos. Why are you going to get the players? In prison. In prison. We did, the, the prison clothes, we dyed them, put numbers on them. And uh, I started to get my, my players, the crazy one. Guys who I met doing crime in Arusha, I met them in prison. Mm. In Tampa, doing... 20, 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. so, these, uh, these guys be they became my players. Mm -hmm. And what they asked the boss is for us to practice, not to practice playing, but to run. Mm -hmm. So he was the opportunity all teams could, could run. Mm -hmm. We won the, the, the championship. We really did. My team, Cosmos. Mm -hmm. When we won it, everybody was sent everywhere. And the team was still there? I don't know because uh, at one, one morning while we were asleep, about three days after the victory, everybody was awoken and taken to different prisons okay. everywhere. Right. So your mom was secured. Uh, my mom came with the ambassador uh, one day, I was wearing white, and I, I was in a particular town. So after they sent me all these different places, they sent me back again to. Uh, 
Kukunga. Mm. So when there was a, with Kunga and Kunga uh, and Kunga having a, a game with uh, the Simba and somebody, they said, Mr. Soma, Mr. Soma, there's someone with some suits who wants to talk to you. Yeah. So that's when they called me and asked me, will you sign this paper? We said, we sign this paper, we send it home. So I used, I just signed it. I didn't read it. You don't even think about it. No, no. Yeah. I just read it. I just signed it. They say, go to change your food, put it on my mother, reset me a suit, mm. and put on my suit, and took me to the airport the next day. Mm. Yeah. That's how it was. Yeah. That's how it was. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. So after taking to the airport, mm. I was refused mm. by, on the flight because my wife met me, the woman who had my tree, my, my good wife, mm. uh, she used to come to the prison every single day while I was incarcerated before the time I was in Arusha. Mm. But for the time I was in Tanda, uh, I stayed a very long time from seeing her. So I met her in the airport with her. My auntie at that time showed a life, my children, I was happy to see them. Mm. And I thought I was going to fly, but then the, the next step. So the next thing, the police came. Mm. But five, six policemen with guns and handcuffs. Mm. And they took me to the police precinct in Dapsaw, mm. in the dungeon. So while I was there, I met two policemen mm. who were using the fly to, to sleep on, but they had some kind of disciplinary. Uh, uh, and one in Zungu, from Romania. Mm. Then, I met Hassan um, one week before they, they took me from, took me to the airport. Mm. I don't know Hassan, mm. but Hassan, thank God, after uh, we stayed for three weeks in the dungeon, me and this in Zungu, yeah, just going, going to court in Daslam, mm. just getting dates for court, maybe a month. Then, I saw Hassan one, one morning mm. after me and listened to the prayed. Mm. We saw Hassan in the line in handcuffs. Mm. And how did he get in jail? This word said him. Mm. So Hassan is the one who went and sent his sister, his cousin, Chitula Kasu, mm. who was married to uh, Salimin Salim Amor mm. in Zanzibar. Mm. So she's the one who came, saw me. And, uh, I, I never forget she came in a basket of food and then she said, she, this is wrong. You are pardoned by the president. Mm. Why are you in prison? Mm. So then she started, I followed up this, she went to parliament. Uh, I think parliament was in dark here. Mm. And then she saw several parliamentarians and then she spoke to Mr. Amrema. Mm. He told me, come Then how was the best minister? Mm. Yes. So I went to his office with her, making that. The policeman and the immigration. Why is he locked? Still locked up? Mm. And I said, Oh, this stuff is by the farm. Uh, got, he said, Well, maybe give him a, uh, some kind of. Well, if you don't want him to go back to the farm, but he must be free. Mm. And then he asked me, Do you have a passport? Yes. Put my name on my passport. With and then I started living with her from mm. that day. But I must report to the immigration every day. Mm. Every single day, I must kind of travel anywhere. Mm. So I reported there for a month, a little more than a month. And uh, the woman, she allowed me. She, she became like my wife. Mm. From living up, so after several years, I got a kid alive. Mm. And uh, she didn't see my wife. So I saw my wife uh, several couple of occasions. And I have a daughter today, Miss Sarah. Uh, I just see my grandson on the, on the grocery mm. and the picture. The so, picture. And the picture. Mm. So um, this is a, a full circle mm. begging from Mr. after Mr. Mungi, Mr. Kappa. But he was a, he was a foreign affairs minister. Mm. And we spoke, we started speaking to him. Mm. He became president. Mm. When he became president and they start seeing the property and the kind of property that I'm dealing with, one black man. Mm. That's when my problems get worse. Mm. All my letters start to uh, bouncing back. I get no answers. And then after Mr. Amkapa, there was uh, Mr. Kikwek, yes. who was very close to my government. I have letters. And uh, I went to several um, 
several things there. Well, the people in the farm, they're very big, mm. and lovely, mm. and they have lots of money. Mm. So anybody who deals with me, my kids, and right now, they are well off. Mm. Everybody. Okay, so uh, let's go back a little bit when you, you know, Mr. Uh, the late uh, Mrema met you and you know, the, he ordered the police to uh, release you from, you know, the, the, the police station. Uh, you kept staying on in Tanzania. Uh, for, for one million more than half. And then what? And they, they sent me back, one, one day they sent uh, uh, the immigration to my house, where I was staying. Yeah. And then they get, get the, you have to leave tomorrow morning. A couple of months, and my sister came from the USA mm. and got me. Mm. And I went back to America. And I just started right away trying to contact the embassy. Fighting for your project. He's trying to see my children. Mm. And uh, it's been 20 something years. Yeah, 20 something years. Everybody I know where I am. Um, I, I read Sandro, mm. I know the commissioner, Mr. Koba, um, um, what's his name, Lukuri. Yeah. And they all, I've been to, I've been to Mr. Ciro's office. Yes. So Mr. Ciro called Mr. Lukuri on the phone. Mm. So Mr. Lukuri, do you know about this case? He says no. Mm. Okay, you must take care of this case, but you mean Mr. Koba? Mm. Mr. Koba is the commissioner. Mm. He's sending all the people. Yeah. He's sending everything. But they cannot help me because, uh, this politics involved, like I know Dr. Slack. So, for example, if how, for example, if the government, uh, you know, would like to intervene in your case and help you secure your property, how easy would be the process? No, it's very easy. Right now, I'm talking to Mr. I, I, after I went to Mr. Magella and he sent me to to the Doma to see uh, this policeman in charge of the detail of the mama, uh, Mr. Midala. Mr. Midala promised me uh, within a certain time I would, I would see mama, mm. the president. Mm. But she's the one who could make everything. So the president is a mere, she's the one who can help. She can help. So I, I started writing her letters, many letters, but I have not had any reply. So then I met uh, Mr. Uh, I just spoke to him, um, Boniface, and he's, he's the one, his name is, uh, uh, okay. yeah, maybe this, 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 uh, Mr. Boniventure, mm. Boniventure, he's, uh, he's sort of a government official who, in the office of the president, mm. he get my, he wrote, I wrote the same letters I wrote, I sent to Mr. Magella, he sent I went to the president's office. We went there and made a call up a couple of weeks weeks back, and we're still waiting in line mm. to see the president. That's why I'm at right now. And that's why you are waiting for. Yes, I'm just waiting to see the president. Mm. After all these years, she's the one can correct everything. Uh, hey, who is the? I mean, what is happening at the property right now? At the property, these guys have, have built. Uh, they've cut all my trees. I have these big lovely trees, thousands of them. Mm. I refuse to cut them. But I never planted. Mm. But they have cut the trees, they build, they have done, they're doing so many things over there. I think they have, they are dividing up the, the place between three members of this, this government, uh, the three big, uh, I just hear names for them. But you know, you don't want to call names of people because you're not sure. Mm. So, uh, all I know is uh, Mr. Peter Christen, uh, he sold the farm to Mr. Uh, Mr. Christianicus. Mm. He's, a, he's a rich man. He's a Greek. We're born in Tanzania, I think. And they, they know the Wahindi because Wahindi has a, a farm in Musa River also. And his parents were farm in Musa River. Mm. So um, I, was, I, was, I was about to go to Arusha to see this ITV, which was supposed to go to, go to the farm to ask these questions and all that. Mm. But since God guided me to Mr. Benjamin mm. and to your, your station, I mm. thank for the great graces. I'm here mm. and uh, I, you, I asked to see the lady. I want to see the president. The president. Yeah. She's the one who can my, 
You, you, you kept referring to these guys who cut uh, in the trees at your fun as they, but who are they? I mean, is there a name? Well, um, as, you know, I, um, as, far, as far as I know, mm. this, this Greek, he has a couple of sons, friends in the South Kappa, but you hear Mr. Kipeke's son's name is Colin. I mean, these guys, I, I, I talk to personally, I, I speak, try to speak to Rindiani since I was in America, mm. and he ignored me. Mm. You know, Mr. Bernard, maybe I met him in person with Mr. Uh, Mahiga, and he, you know, he told me, I'm going to find out where the title deed is, because how did this title deed leave the bank mm. with, without my um, signature? Mm. So he, up to now, I haven't heard from him. Um, Dr. Slato took the parliament, mm. the case is there. He never appeared in, uh, in Parliament mm -hmm. and uh, he, he uh, you know, the yeah. minute I shut him on CCM mm -hmm. and I don't want to get him shut them on CCM, mm -hmm. and, you know, I want my rights as a human being, yeah. I want my home back. Yeah. If they don't want to give me and they think that the Zumbu is more important than, than me, then let them Zumbu pay. Mm. Let them give me compensation. Yeah. Give me a place in the bush I can call home because what I came to this country to do is live. Have a place called home. Mm. Tazi is my home. My daughter, she's this her name is Jessie. But she's training to be a Olympian in Tanzania. She must win either 100 meters, one of these races because I have lived a long time. I have seen, most have seen a Tanzania come at seven. Yeah. And, uh, this is my country. I, I love this country and I want to be part of uh, its existence. I try to take my daughter here. Yeah. And I actually, I, I just wanted to, uh, to ask her a question. Uh, Malik, you've been very quiet. Do you been supporting your father in, you know, his fight for, for his property? Can you, you know, briefly tell us how hard has been the, the struggle? How hard the struggle has been? Uh, for you as a, you know, as a girl, 15 years old, you said, yeah. Well, it started since I was, since I was younger, since in America. My dad has been on the phone talking to many officials in Tanzania uh, as long as, since I was younger. And he always was looking forward to come to Tanzania and get back his property and because of this property, I split my family up. I have many brothers and sisters who won't talk to me because they do not, uh, they're very angry of how my dad wasn't able to be with them since he was in jail for seven years. So when my sisters were born on the property when he was incarcerated, he couldn't spend time with them. So it made my family pieces. So I can't speak to them as how I should. And since I rather just fight for the property mm -hmm. because I know if I get this property back, mm -hmm. it will bring the family back together. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, you know, let, let, let's imagine that the president uh, will have an opportunity to watch it. There's a video. Uh, what would you like to uh, tell her you know, if you speak well, to the president? I would like to tell her that Tanzania needs justice and. My dad has been fighting for so long and it's about time that Tanzania needs to know uh, about the ones that are causing the crimes and the ones that are the victims because my father is a victim and it's been too long to just keep quiet and to act like everything is being swept under the carpet and hopefully um, with all her strength as a president, she will see how my father has been mistreated and she can be the hero of the story and help my father to get back what he, he needs and what he owned and what he deserves because it's far too long. It's been, we came here in 2017, uh, but he's been longer, here longer. And since I've stayed here, I've been spoken to so many government officials. I've went to offices with him, and hopefully, Samia, she's the one. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, and I hope she will uh, have an opportunity to see and you know and uh, feel 
uh, what you were saying, uh, the way I feel it. And uh, Ndugu Smith, you are not going to give up on the fight. You're going to keep fighting for your property. No matter what. It's not, it's not in my blood. Yeah. I'm a son of slaves. My great, 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 great grandparents. When my great, 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 great grandfather was, uh, I would say, coming to up to, to, uh, to was in, was in maybe in the prisons in uh, Bagamoyo, mm-hmm. being sent away, mm-hmm. I was there yeah. in his back home. Yeah. Now, many, many, many slaves or ex-slaves, people, you get trinkets, a nice house, a nice apartment, a nice car. That's not what I want in life. Yeah. I want to be on the continent with my children, uh, living in Africa. Mm-hmm. You know, as a, it's a dream of our ancestors, including the dream of and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wishing you all the best, Lou. I bless you. Yeah. Uh, Bessie, what is the matter? You are the chance to then impaka kufiki hapo hatu toko na chaziada chapo chapo fanya hapa kama ambapo me pata na farsi ya po askeliza wageni wetu hapa and Lou Smith na binti yake na Rika uh, wame kama kutokuwa umewasiki wamekuwa wakipambania uh, haki yao ya umiliki wa ardhi yao ambayo inaenda makana eh ipo huko Arusha uh, kwa miaka mingi sana uh, kama ambavyo umesikia hapa ndugu yetu amekuwa hata me uh, kaa ile miaka saba akaondoka jela akarudishwa chini dadi huko kwao ambapo hakuwa na ndugu tena akachukuliwa kwenda Marekani lakini bado hajaacha hapo pigania haki yake na yeye na binti yake wanaamini kwamba kama kuna mtu ambaye anaweza kuwasaidia kupata haki yao basi ni rais Samia Suluh Hassan na wamefanya jitihada za kutosha za kumwandikia Uh, na kama ambapo tuko umemsikia ni kwamba yuko kwenye foleni uh, ya kusubiri kwa na na, 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 na rais Samia Suluh Hassan uh, tutumaini kwa mpingine atapata nafasi ya kukutana naye na kuwasilisha kilio uh, kilio chake kwa 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 kuhuru wa nchi na kwa namna gani nafasi yake inaweza kutatuliwa Mr Smith and Amalika uh, uh, thank you very much for you know showing up at our office and have this conversation with us and uh, we wish you all the best uh, uh, and i hope that you will get the opportunity to see the president and you know explain whatever you want to explain uh, thank you for your time thank you very much yeah. okay. thank you so much okay. Sasa mama yote chanzo mpaka mtu mwingine mimi nilikuwa na kuendesha mazungumzo haya ni Alipa Saidi uh, kwa niaba ya timu nzima ambayo ni kama kamera ya kiongozi wa Stephen Gibi uh, Carlo Francis uh, Shafiq Hamisi uh, tunawashukuru sana kwa mtu mwingine bye bye Thank you.